so guys welcome to leaves and lungs so as you know that we are doing some good series on uh, food safety officer exams because uh, like a lot of notification has recently come and we have even like started like uh, customized courses for various students so this is part of that plan okay so today we will see uh, like in the exam point of view like how this exam could be like prepared and today i will teach some basic topics uh, like some basic keywords that you could should understand because these are like uh, one word one word pointers that can give you like great marks uh, so guys uh, like i'll start with this match the following type so like uh, i'll i'll just tell you more about each and every word so if you have any pen or paper or if you have any notes app just do remember this topics alone because they are the ones that could be asked in your exams and these are from the uh, previous year question papers well or on the various states that has been asked okay so please pay attention to us and please take care of uh, like maintaining a notebook for this so that you, you could cover much more in a shorter span of time so the first thing is uh, the bacillus lichenniformis so for those of you who don't know that uh, it is one of the chief agent that can cause ropiness in bread that is it it is one of the agent that spoils the bread okay so ropiness is nothing but it is a condition where the bread becomes very sticky and cohesive okay and this makes uh, like it is unfit for consumption so this goes straight to here okay the next thing is zain okay so it is not zain malik uh, it is zain uh, like zain is actually a protein that is present in maize okay maize or some other ways called as corn okay so this is the protein storage uh, that gives a uh, uh, that a major portion of about 80% in the maize is the zain protein. Okay, so you know that aflatoxin is a chemical or toxin that is produced by Aspergillum species. Aspergillus is a fungus, and uh, like uh, you should be knowing about Maillard reaction. Okay, so everything that turns brown, for example, if you take any biscuits, if you take any cakes, the browning reaction is called as associated with Maillard reaction. So this Maillard reaction is usually associated with the amino acids. Uh, reacting with any reducing sugar okay so here the reducing sugar is glucose so in mylad reaction glucose is involved okay so just remember this is a browning reaction uh, take note down of everything that i say because these are from the uh, previous year question papers so that makes very very important for you to understand each and every single word that i put out in the slides here and the next is uh, like invertase so invertase is nothing but it is an enzyme that hydrolyzes sucrose into other reducing sugars okay so sucrose gets broken down into fructose and glucose okay so this enzyme is catalyzed by the uh, in invertase just remember this and uh, the next thing is uh, like okay so it's very blunt okay so just try to remember this so uh, can you see apple is here okay so apple is actually formed from thalamus okay so thalamus is nothing but uh, it is a it is a it is a part of the fruit okay it is a part of the seed also you can call like that so uh, like thalamus it is where this part gives rise to uh, uh, apple okay so just remember this and the next thing is uh, okay okay pineapple okay so when you eat pineapple you get some stinging sensation right okay so this stinging sensation is actually due to a substances called as i won't tell you the name you just have to find what is the name of that so that uh, compound contains an enzyme called as protease okay so this protease what happens is it just denaturates the protein okay protease okay it just breaks the protein so this is present in pineapple okay so the next thing is uh, boiler okay when you use boiler obvious thing is associated with steam okay and the next thing is heart swell so uh, basically uh, when you when you have some any like just imagine uh, if you have any cool drinks or if you have any carbonated drinks if you leave it as such for a longer time what happens is there there will be like huge swelling okay swelling is very hard sometimes uh, you will hear a burst also so this heart swell is associated with cans okay so just remember the basic thing thalamus when you this is not associated with any uh, the bodily functions of thalamus that is present in the hypothalamus or thalamus of the brain this is thalamus of the plant organ that give rise to apple okay uh, the next thing is oil oil is associated with reversion okay so like i'll tell you what is reversion in a separate topic so just remember for now oil is reversed okay in either form uh, fine okay 
so this is like very interesting so uh, like i've given like five words and five words in this side okay so conching so conching is nothing but okay it is a process where you mix okay cocoa okay where you mix cocoa and butters and sugars in equal manner to get the final product of chocolate okay so just remember conching ka and cha okay so just remember somehow because in the exams you'll be asked straight away okay you you won't be like tested in an analytical manner only like you are being tested in an objective manner if you know conching is associated with chocolate then you can easily clear it very comfortably okay so next thing is hops okay hops is associated with beer okay so in separate videos i'll tell what is hops but just for right now just remember hops is beer okay so usually uh, like for those people who have consumed beer you know that the bottom sip is usually like uh, the taste is very bitter and uh, that contains a very huge amount of uh, uh, sedimentary alcohol which is higher concentration is compared that is floating above so that region is called as hops the bottom sip beer is called hops in the colloquial term so just remember something like that okay so kefir so kefir is a product that is associated with dairy okay that is associated with the milk butter those kinds of products okay and the next is methionine okay methionine is an essential amino acid and cysteine is an non essential amino acid okay so just try to remember like uh, like i can't tell you everything each and everything in detail so if you have a google right now if you have a mobile phone right now just try to know what are the essential amino acids there could be like some 10 okay so just remember what are the 10 essential amino acids and just remember what are the non essential amino acids so in the exam you could be asked uh, like uh, four essential acids out of that uh, one is a non essential amino acid find out like those kinds of question you can easily expect it so like just remember list out uh, what is essential amino acids and what is non essential amino acids okay the next thing is gliadin okay so gliadin is nothing but uh, like the name sound similar to protein okay so just remember this gliadin is a protein and uh, prolin okay prolin is actually an amino acid that is very major amino acid that is present in the human body and uh, you know that uh, sodium benzoate okay sodium benzoate is a well established preservative just remember this thing because since you are preparing for exams you must be knowing all the terms and the stearic acid is saturated fatty acids like the same way you prepared for essential amino acid you should also prepare for what are saturated fatty acids and what are unsaturated fatty acids okay so that's how you should like prepare your exams Uh, because without knowing it this is very hard to crack this exam because most of the things are not objective but um, not uh, subjective but objective okay so the next thing is uh, bha bha is nothing but it's butylated hydroxy anisole okay butylated uh, that is butylated hydroxy anisole and it is an antioxidant okay so antioxidants are nothing but uh, they are the one they stabilize the free radicals because lot of chemical reactions happens and lot of oxygen species are produced so these oxygen species are very toxic to some cells and uh, like these antioxidants control these uh, like toxic products that is associated with the metabolism or any other chemical reaction that is happening in the body just remember bha is butylated okay butylated butylated hydroxy anisole okay so stearic acid is there palmitic acid is there like lot of acids are there just try to remember just put a tableau column and just categorize and classify it accordingly uh, so as you know that we are studying about the uh, different states of uh, uh, liquid food solid food so we should have some basic physical physics behind the uh, food also for example reynolds number so reynolds number is associated with fluid turbulence okay so what is the concept of knowing these kinds of numbers because uh, only when you know the matter state and only when you know the concept of physics that is involved behind the science you could able to test and you could able to find whether this is a, a kind of a good product or bad product for example in case i'm just telling you okay what if uh, like uh, water is in the state of like an honey okay so if you could drink you could easily find out right because water is very thin and very easy to consume whereas honey is very viscous and is very difficult to uh, like drink a lot 
so okay so this is where you just need to know about the turbulence just you know to know about viscosity elasticity that's why they ask you and put to put all these things in the syllabus okay so from the in, in the, the perspective of those things like i've put some basic important numbers that is very essential for your exams the first number is reynolds number so reynolds number is nothing but this is very a uh, common number and everyone who have studied a uh, 10th or 12th uh, the basic physics must must have known that reynolds number is associated with fluid turbulence okay so you know there is like a streamline flow those kinds of flows you'd have studied in the basic syllabus itself so reynolds number is associated with turbulence so tow tox number so tow tox number is nothing but okay uh, just remember ox ox is nothing but it is the oxidation status of a food product okay so usually when fats and oils are like uh, manufactured and uh, packed they have given this totox number or totox is total oxidation number okay so if if the oil contains high amount of oxidation status then it is a bad oil if it contains lower amount of uh, totox number then it is a good oil for cooking okay so just remember totox ox is for oxidation status of fats and oil or just remember this thing the next concept is e number okay so for example if you take any maggi packet okay so there there will be like some adding some additives some preservatives everything but uh, they need they does not need to or they do not need to mention everything detail in the uh, packet covers so instead of that uh, they will just give something like uh, they assign a number to each product for example uh, in in a bottle in a bottle of uh, pulpy orange or any juice uh, they would have added citric acid okay so citric acid they would not explicitly like uh, mentioned it as citric acid for example they would have mentioned as e330 okay so this e330 conforms to citric acid add addition so this is what uh, e number is so this is uh, associated with food additives and next thing is nusselt number so nusselt number is nothing but uh, it is associated with uh, heat transfer of the liquids okay so just remember nusselt is like a uh, heat transfer uh, how amount of uh, heat does the uh, like uh, fluid is associated with on all those kinds of the stuff you don't need to remember like complete what is the theory behind just remember new cell number is associated with heat transfer that would be like very very like suffice for this exam and then the next thing is sherwood number sherwood number is associated with uh, as i told before for nusselt number with heat transfer the sherwood is associated with mass transfer if you want to know detail much about this just google it because i can't tell each and everything in detail uh so the next is uh it's basically some uh, bunch of chemicals these chemicals are basic uh, stuff that is used in food science so first is hydrogen peroxide so if you have been to any chemistry lab you know that hydrogen peroxide is an aseptic uh, uh, agent and this is used for aseptic packaging okay so uh, like basically it is a colorless solution that is even like applied for uh, dressings in various uh, bedside clinical facilities or for surgical facilities also uh, especially for uh, like diabetic patients if they come for debridement of their skin hydrogen peroxide is applied to clean the skin okay so the next thing is copper sulfate so copper sulfate is according to the options given here it is best associated with reducing sugars okay because what happens is uh, if you have heard of benedict's test it is used for identification of sugar if any the solution contains any sugar the benedict's reagent is added the reagent is actually copper sulfate so what happens is this copper sulfate oxidizes with the reducing sugars and it produces a, a certain color that 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 uh, infers that the sugar is present in this uh, fluid or substances so this forms the basic of the benedict's test so please do remember what is benedict's test is all about if you don't know just google it and find it what it is like please do take off everything that i say in a, in, a, in any papers just at least draw remember the topic so that in the, when the exam comes it is very easy to remember which is very essential for your preparation next thing is lecithin so lecithin is actually an emulsifier that is used for the manufacture of chocolates okay so this emulsification is nothing but it is a kind of a jelly like substances that mix all the cocos and the other ingredients to give the final product okay so just remember lecithin is also present in egg but that is a different kind of protein so here this lecithin is actually an emulsifier okay
and try calcium phosphate okay so just always remember wherever calcium comes just remember the color white okay so just remember this calcium phosphate is used in very uh, powdered beverages okay because uh, for example if it is used in uh, any uh, like health mix or any baby powders you could find some traces of uh, tricalcium phosphate in different compounds okay so this is associated with the powdered beverages okay so it's a it's a fine talcum like powder usually talcum powder is mixed with uh, calcium phosphate powders to make uh, as an adult drink okay so just remember uh, tricalcium phosphate is associated with powders and this powders are used for making beverages okay any health mixes or something like that the next thing is sodium nitrate okay sodium nitrate is nothing but it is a common salt that we use to establish preservation of meat okay so this is used to identify the uh, like whether the meat changes its color or not okay so if you like uh, preserve with sodium nitrate you can like maintain the quality of the meat for such a longer time okay so this is what the uh, like uses of each and every chemical that i have mentioned here please just do not forget what i say just note it out in a paper that is will be very useful and i'll also provide this uh, pdf for you okay so that you can like read it and match it as an uh, like as a form of uh, practice or whatever you like it okay Uh, so some bunch of abbreviations and you should be knowing that okay so like ATP is nothing but it is associated with energy okay and the BOD is uh, uh, like uh, it's biological oxygen demand and this is associated with effluent okay so uh, when any factory leases uh, like waters that mix with the normal uh, water that is present in any ponds and rivers the oxygen uh, like the chemicals um, the, the chemical mixes with the water and this chemicals paves the way for growth of larger number of algae and the plants so what this plant and the algae does is they take more amount of oxygen uh, that, that is dissolved in the water and this leads to uh, the water being completely devoid of oxygen and is very toxic to microorganisms and fishes so this is specially because of uh, effluent okay so hacp so hacp is a very important topic for all the exams uh, that is associated with any food science uh, it is actually uh, like i'll tell you the abbreviations in a separate classes so this is associated with food safety just remember this okay the codex elementarius commission like everything i have taught before so similarly hacp is also a big concept i'll tell you in like uh, in a separate thing uh, this gmp is nothing but it is good manufacturing uh, uh, like practices uh, this is associated with the protein quality okay only when you like manufacture properly you'll get some good quality so gmp is with associated with protein quality and the pdca cas uh, like you have to like find what the abbreviation is because we don't have time to discuss each and everything just note it down in your book try to find what is pdca is okay and uh, why what in what way it is associated with plant quality you just have to find it out in your own preparation okay the next thing is very interesting because this is like totally a biochemistry thing so glycogenolysis so glycogenolysis is nothing but uh, the they have given the term here itself okay the glycogen gets lysed that is it gets broken down in the liver to form glucose okay so this is associated with glycogen so okay beta oxidation is associated with fatty acids uh, guys these are like very basic for your biology uh, you have to go through it uh, because we, we can't be dealing everything here okay and the next thing is uh, urea cycle is uh, protein metabolism krebs cycle is citric acid cycle and glycolysis is it can be happened through aerobic and anaerobic also okay this is very basic you have to read in each and everything what this is all about and what are the uh, output of each and every uh, chemical reaction that is involved but for right now you, you you should be knowing the basic thing alone uh the next one is also some tricky things so uh, michael is constant okay so michael is constant uh, actually the reaction that deals with uh, any enzyme activity so basically in the enzyme kinetics okay so uh, like just remember michael is associated with enzyme activity and the next thing is z value z value is nothing but uh, like uh, for example uh, we have read various types of pasteurization heat treatment right okay so this z value just gives the temperature at which it predicts the death of microorganism so anything that deals with the death of the microorganism should be associated with sterilization 
and uh, WVTR. So the abbreviation as actually is uh, water vapor transmission rate. So this water vapor transmission rate is associated with uh, packaging materials. Okay, so because uh, like only those materials that uh, can reduce the water vapor transmission rate can preserve the food for a longer time and hence uh, this the water vapor transmission rate is associated with packaging okay so terminal velocity so like we have to deal some basic physics concept also so this terminal velocity is nothing but when you when you like uh, like when you put an object from an height the object falls down at a constant speed okay so that is a certain speed okay that is a there is a point in which the body cannot accelerate furthermore so this is called as terminal velocity okay so this is the ball that is falling here so it might be like uh, 10 meter per second here 20 meter per second here 30 meter per second here so after this this will remain constant throughout the fall so this is called as terminal velocity so this basic uh, terminal velocity concept is used in fluidized bed drying okay so fluidized bed drying so this is one of the important technique uh, that has been employed in uh, food, food sciences. Uh, I will deal everything in the later subjects, but right now just try to remember what is terminal velocity. And if you want to know that what is the concept of fluidized bed drying, just Google it, know one or two words about it. And that is very, very good, very enough for this exam. And then the next thing is hedonic scales. So hedonic scale is actually a scale that tests whether the food is uh, extremely good or extremely bad, okay? So like, how could you like, uh, find the food is good or bad like through your senses right okay so if you find the color of the uh, food is very bad then you can obviously find that it is uh, it's not gonna be good and if it smells uh, or it stings uh, then it's also going to be like very bad so with help of any sensory uh, like senses all of the sense organs that is involved in to identifying whether the food is good or bad comes under this hedonic scale so they have some nine categories okay so we don't want to deal much about in detail just know hedonic scale that us is associated with uh, whether you like the food or not whether the food might be good or not okay so sensory science is involved here so hedonic scale associated with food okay uh, so, the, so even the next thing is some tricky uh, these are some basic uh, like physical sciences involved here. Uh, you have to remember this, okay? So angle of repose. So this angle of repose concept is nothing but uh, like, uh, for example, you're going to a beach, okay? And uh, you are constructing a conical sand house, okay? F uh, okay. So there is a limit where this conical shape is formed. So after when you like uh, put more sand here, this will fall down, right? So this angle at which a structure is maintained is called as angle of repose. So this angle of repose was varied for different structures uh, if you are, uh, and for different materials also. For example, the, the thing that you are doing with the sand can be like, uh, like it might be like three feet, okay? But whereas in case if you do with some other material such as clay, you can build even such a taller structure. Okay, so that depends upon the uh, angle of the repose associated with each material. Okay, so uh, the concept of avalanche that is uh, the free fall of the objects from the mountains. Okay, just remember the mountain is there, snow is here. If a large amount of snow is accumulated, just free falls here, right? So this is what angle of repose is all about. So this concept is associated with hopper design. So hopper design is nothing but it is a storage system. It's a storage system uh, that is constructed for a storage of food materials. So this angle of repose is associated with this hopper design, okay? So you know that entropy, okay? So entropy is a thermodynamics concept. So you should know what is entropy and whether it's an intensive property or extensive property. So we don't want to deal much about this thing because it's like pure and pure physical thing. Anyway, like you just need to remember uh, it is an extensive property. So conduction, so conduction is heat transfer. Okay, the basic thing is when you heat a utensil, the heat get transferred to the liquid that is present inside the uh, utensil also this is like uh, heat transfer Lancashire so Lancashire is nothing but it is a place in uh, England so they are famous for production of a uh, boilers okay so this is associated with the uh, boilers and atomizer so atomizer is nothing but uh, it is associated with spray drying so what happens in atomizer is for example if you have uh, 
uh, for example if you have liquid chocolate like structures right okay so what happens is when you blow a huge amount of air here this will get solidified and it gets formed into a structural chocolate uh, that you finally eat so this is called as uh, spray drying okay so either you use air either you use hot liquid whatever stuff to solidify this agent this is called as atomizer like you should always read this as atom okay because uh, like you are like converting a structure into an atomic form that is a solid form so that is how you can actually remember these things because there is like plenty of uh, like uh, one words that you should be like reading on and on it is very difficult to remember but uh, do have some random ideas in mind so in the term time of exams you could have some basic connect okay or else it is like very difficult to remember each and everything okay uh, the next thing is uh, the dielectric so dielectric uh, when you like translate colloquially it is actually uh, nothing but it is associated with uh, insulators okay so uh, or it is also associated with uh, microwave heating okay so what happens in microwave is there is a large amount of radio waves that is being pro like uh, uh, like produced and this radio waves acts on the food materials okay so this food materials you have molecules inside it uh, and uh, like each uh, atom or each molecule is acted upon by this energy of radio wave and there is like dipole heating happens here or dielectric heating happens here okay so this is what dielectric is all about it is associated with microwave heating if you're able to connect these two dots then that is very much essential for you you don't need to remember the concept i'm just trying to tell you to make you get some better understanding so uh, sublimation so sublimation is nothing but it is a form where you get okay that is for example you get you have ice ice melts to water water melts to water vapor right instead uh, like uh, the solid is transferred directly to gas okay so this concept is applied in freeze drying okay so this is applied in freeze drying uh, where liquid just transferred to sublimations okay so that that is how this uh, freeze drying is actually happens through sublimation technique so triple point so triple point is associated with any supracritical liquid supercritical fluid uh, so triple point is where all the three states of the matter is able to uh, produce for example if you take water at zero degree celsius uh, you can try to convert the water to uh, ice you can also try to convert the uh, water to gas and you can also keep it at liquid so where all the three states are possible is called as the triple point so dew point as you know that uh, dew point is nothing but it is associated with uh, cooler design okay uh, and next thing is flash point flash point is associated with uh, uh, fats and oil guys uh, you, you should need to remember all these things uh, they are basic concepts in your uh, science but try to remember each and everything what is associated with by knowing this thing alone you can actually solve everything in this kinds of exams but anyway i'll just put everything in detail right now so that you could be uh, at least able to recollect some things in your exams okay and uh, this flash point is nothing but it is the uh, like the lower temperature at which the water or vape or any vapors it gets ignited if it's given at an ignition source for example if you take petrol okay so uh, like when the temperature of the uh, atmosphere or temperature of any place goes beyond a certain temperature for example 50 degree what happens is the petrol tank or the petrol uh, like anything that gets uh, ignited very uh, like rapidly so this is called as uh, the flash point so this is associated with fats and oils okay guys try to remember the concepts the concepts will help you to like identify the answers in the exams uh, so tolerate with me because uh, we have few more things coming up because this is a never ending topic and we have lots to study the more you try to recall the more and try to revise that is very helpful for your exams okay so that is why I, i'm like starting this series i could easily uh, like make a video out of uh, two or three topics and i i can like send it to you but the thing is try to know more about of things in the given amount of the time okay so methyl chloride so methyl chloride is nothing but okay 
so even if you don't have any basic knowledge just just try to go with the options and the things that is given here okay so first of all uh, you know that uh, ethyl alcohol is associated with fermentation okay so if you able to like mark this one then uh, obviously you can get two marks out of this and uh, next thing is um, what happens is okay propylene glycol so if you have if you are like uh, any uh, like a cosmetic lover or even if you like use any cosmetics you know that the propylene glycol is a basic of uh, cosmetics so this is actually humectants okay so humectants is nothing but anything that absorbs water into it okay so for your skin uh, a good amount of water is very good for your uh, like good looking so this propylene glycol is actually a humectant and this butyric acid it comes from butter okay so even without knowing anything in detail if you're able to eliminate the basic things and you're able to match what is given here you could like easily crack this exam okay so just remember these things and uh, like maybe like you're left with two options methyl chloride and exane okay so always remember you know the concept of cfc chlorofluorocarbons okay so like all the allergens all the associated with the uh, like uh, the halogen group that is the seventh tape seventh group in the periodic table so they are mostly associated with the refrigeration okay so hence you can mark methyl chloride with refrigerant and hexane hexane is nothing but it is a solvent here uh, try to know more about hexane and also it has some uh, very good uh, uses also and some abbreviations you could be also thrown some abbreviations okay so i will give you an idea how to like establish uh, some association even if you don't know the complete abbreviation okay so just try to remember what is given here okay maybe like just look basically okay so here you know that iso confers to quality okay you can mark this one very easily uh, okay so the next thing is you don't have any clear idea but you can see some clues here a O A C. Okay. So what this could be, okay. Can also, you just look at the options also. Okay. So that the starting letter of the each word gives a clue about the abbreviation. Okay. So like, for example, if there is food research here and here is CFTRA. Okay. So if you are going to make any guesses, just try to imply all this conceptual thing. No, I mean like uh, this eliminating techniques. Okay. So just try to mark this with this because you see f here and also you see f here okay and uh, and once again here you see n here and nutrition here so probably this might be associated with this i'll tell what each and everything is about and you can see chemical analysis is the c is here and c is here okay so this could be an answer to okay and for refrigeration re is there and asre is there so even if you don't know anything okay you can easily mark the things okay by applying your mind at the time of the exams so right i'll tell you right now okay so this is association of analytical collaborations okay so this is a body that is present in india especially for chemical analysis okay so association of association of analytical collaborations okay so this is what this abbreviation is about and asre so asre is nothing but american society of refrigeration okay so even if you don't know you can like mark this iso certains to like it's the quality standards and uh, central food technology research institute that is for food research okay so you can just clearly mark this nin it is confers to a nutrition it is a product just try to know what is this if you know try to give a uh, give your answers in the comment sections okay some uh, microbiological topics here and there uh, okay so you know that virus is associated with tobacco mosaic virus that is tmb virus you should be knowing this because you don't have any other go and uh, for bacteria you know that clostridium causes botulism this botulism is actually a bacteria right okay so uh, what happens is mold is basically penicillin you should be knowing this so you have left with two options yeast and algae so algae definitely not is associated with wine okay so um, yeast is actually responsible for manufacture of wine so this dha is actually nothing but it is a 
uh, omega 3 acid okay omega 3 acid that is present in the good qualities of uh, in the algae so uh, hence you should mark this thing with algae guys these are like very basic stuff you should be knowing and everything by all the microbiological stuff by right now okay so there are some uh, like products some processes there and some products is there okay okay so just even if you don't know anything there will be like one or two options then where you can clearly mark it correctly for example there is wine you obviously know that wine is fermented right okay so just mark this so you know raisin so raisin is nothing but the dried things okay the dried which the dried fruits that uh, you use for seasoning of cakes the small uh, like those things are called as raisins so these raisins are the dried uh, apricots the dried grapes and all those things come under the classification of raisins so what happens is how do you get uh, like a dried product only when you remove all the water so you can mark raisins with dehydration okay so you can uh, clearly like able to mark these two okay so coagulation so coagulation is nothing but something that it gets uh, something like curd you can call coagulation so the, the the answer that you can like pick up here is cheese gets coagulated okay so coagulation helps in the formation of cheese either way so you know that leavening is a process okay leave just remember bread are like bread leaves okay so this leavening is a process in how bread is prepared so leavening or leaves is associated with bread just try to remember this thing and a macaroni okay so this macaroni is uh, like it is extruded from pasta that's how macaroni is prepared there is like a separate extrusion uh, machines that is for a preparation of this macaroni but try to remember it is extruded that is it is like formed from that is it is from ex removed from uh, like pasta okay so macaroni this is how it's formed you don't need to dwell deep into it just know the process and the products that is very much essential for your exams and keep on repeating saying and again and again uh, like try to cover more subject in the given span of the time that is the only ulterior motive of this videos okay some basic uh, biochemical stuff okay just try to remember you know that um, a lactose is a disaccharide okay so glucose plus galactose okay so that is like two stuffs is there glucose plus galactose okay so this galactose is a single monosaccharide okay this is monosaccharide this is disaccharide raffinose is nothing but it is a trisaccharide okay so just try to find out what contains uh, what is present in the raffinose okay so uh, this dextran so this dextran is a polysaccharide and dextrin is a oligosaccharide okay guys this is very basic stuff i'm just trying to give you an idea of about what questions could be asked okay so dextran okay so dextran is oligo dextrin is uh, sorry dextran is polysaccharide and dextrin is oligosaccharide okay uh, so guys all are like hit and miss okay if you don't know that's it that you can like never mark the question as uh, like uh, perfectly with any guesses uh, that's what I am trying to tell you. Just put a tableau column. Just try to remember what are sugars, what are polysaccharide, monosaccharide, oligosaccharides, essential amino acid, non-essential amino acid, which vitamin is fat soluble, which vitamin is uh, water soluble. You should try to remember all the things because they would bluntly ask you the direct questions. There is no stuff or there is no scope for any analysis at your exams. So if you try to, if you don't know what is this, then for sure, then you can never answer this. So anyway, I'll just try to give a background about the stuffs here so that you can have a clear idea. So guys, you know that dextrose, okay? So dextrose is, so if you like, if any of your parents are like any diabetic, you know that uh, uh, patients, when you like have some low uh, sugars in your body, they are infused with dextrose solution, okay? So dextrose is nothing but it is an alternative form of glucose, okay? So this is the form in which uh, sugar is supplied to your body that is dextrose. So this dextrose is an artificial sweetener as well as preservative. Okay. So this dextrose is given in the form of 25 dextrose, 10 dextrose uh, in case when the sugar levels in your body drops down. So dextrose is alternative to glucose. Okay. So just try to remember this. 
and uh, levulose okay so levulose is nothing but as dextrose uh, similar to glucose this levulose is similar to fructose so this levulose is sometimes also called as fruit sugar okay so fructose is usually present in uh, the fruits so hence levulose is otherwise called as fructose colloquially but uh, these two things are very different so they are like almost similar so hence they are called as uh, like with the same names on and off uh, the next thing sorbate okay sorbic acid is nothing but it is a preservative uh, that is used to preserve bread okay so just try to remember this thing and phosphate phosphate is added in your beverages to make sure that it preserved and uh, it is in a good shape for a longer period and as usual you know that sucrose is associated with sugars even you can mark dextrose with sugar levulose with sugar uh, but uh, the thing is you have other options to match with to match with dextrose and levulose okay uh, like can you able to grasp what i'm trying to say Uh, so guys uh, the next thing is even more uh, trickier uh, like anyway you should have to remember all the things because I, even if you don't know the entire concept you should at least know what is the superficial uh, stuff that is associated with each and every word that can be like game changing for exams okay so even when i was preparing for uh, like this uh, lecture i was trying to look for a lot of lots of names because even i could not remember the thing I just went to my books and just referred to what is uh, levulose and what is uh, dextrose. Even I forget what is dextrin and uh, dextron and all the things. Okay, so it is very natural to get forget everything. But anyway, if you keep on revising and trying to remember each and everything again and again, then you have a proper chance of cracking this. So just come to this again here. Okay. So okay. So this vitamin is nothing but it is actually a coenzyme. Okay. If you have to remember this thing. and ozone so ozone if you if you are like uh, been to any uh, like railway station they are providing ozonized packed water right okay so ozone is actually nothing but it is a good disinfectant a good sterilizing agent so this ozone is used to uh, like sterilize or purify waters this is one thing and this ozone is actually a reactionary product okay try to find what is ozone and where this is present uh, the next thing is uh, papain is an enzyme and alginates are thickeners guys you just remember this thing because uh, the time is going on and on for right now you just remember alginate is an thickener ozone is an reactionary product i can explain you but the time is running very late for me also so uh, like even this reached right now over 40 minutes okay so even you for you it's very difficult to uh, like uh, keep your attention oh this is never ending guys okay anyway like we'll wind it up very soon so the thing first of all is uh, you have compressor so any anyone who, who have a refrigerator in, in their house or if their refrigeration get uh, like repaired you know that this term is associated with refrigeration compressor this compresses the air from the outside and this compresses uh, the atmospheric air into some uh, uh, the cool stuff that is responsible for your cooling Uh, like i have already told atomizer so this atomizer previously i have told right this is for spray drying and this thimble okay so this thimble is nothing but it is a part of a instrument called as sock slit okay so if you are if you are like uh, just google it because we don't have time for like teaching everything so this thimble is a instrument uh, uh, like part of an instrument that is present in the sock slit and uh, temper meter so temper meter is nothing but uh it is used to find the um, oh god i forget it totally uh yeah uh, this is used to find the temperature of the uh, chocolates uh, because certain chocolates have some uh, like uh, when they fuse together they they emit some certain temperature and those also get uh, formed at some certain temperature so this temper meter is used to uh, find the uh, chocolates okay so this lowy bond tintometer so tint so tint is nothing but uh, for example if you take any groundnut oil the color should be like uh, it is it is actually a perfect color uh, all the colors should be almost of similar quality they should have a range so this color tint is of any oil of any fluids is measured by this lowy bond tintometer and this is achieved by using various color filter glasses okay 
so like try, try to remember this thimble is an instrument that is present in Soxlet. Uh, like try to find what this is in the Google. 